गुड आफ्टरनून वेलकम टू सी सी लाइव लेक्चर्स आई एम डॉक्टर पवित्रा भारद्वाज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर जीजस एंड मेरी कॉलेज इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस डियर फ्रेंड्स वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग इन द पास्ट लेक्चर अबाउट इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम्स सो वील बी कंटिन्यूइंग दिस डिस्कशन टूडे ऑल्सो इफ यू रिमेंबर आई टेक अ क्विक रिकैप ऑफ वॉट वी हैड डिस्कस्ड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर so we had discussed about information systems and the vitality of uh, information for all activities of life including business and uh, we have seen that how computers have uh, dramatically transformed the way data is processed and how do we get information so today uh, computers have even uh, moved one step ahead and we are not just processing the data but we are also processing the information which is produced from the data so basically this is the whole scenario has become into an intelligent system where key decisions to the enterprise can be taken by automated systems yes what i am saying is that the decision making uh, ability of the individual of the managers at all levels is complemented is comprehended is further uh, strengthened with the use of suitable uh, information systems which are computer based computerized information systems so we had seen that an information system constitutes of various parts so it has the human element of course then you have the computers the networks the databases which manage the data and the programs or the application programs which provide the interface to the user so depending upon the requirements on the enterprise there are different types of information systems which are provided so there are different levels at which people work in the organizations so depending on the level at which a person is working the information needs of that person will vary so accordingly there should be an information system or there should be a, a mechanism of systems which will provide uh, individualistic indi uh, information of course that is not so easy also because there are uh, multiple challenges because sometimes individuals themselves do not understand what are their information needs or if they understand what are the information needs they are not able to pinpoint according to the uh, representation of the computer system so there are environmental issues which may you know which may falter or which may not enable a person so there are a couple of uh, issues which you know which limit the way information systems can be used nevertheless we are going to discuss in today's lecture we are going to start from the uh, various types of information systems that are there which are commonly used in any kind of institution so if you see here the types of information systems they have been classified uh, according to uh, two categories basically so we have information systems which are operational support information systems and then we have management support systems so there are two types of or two main broad categories of information systems here so the operational uh, support systems are that type of information systems which will provide information to the uh, to the lower and middle level of uh, managers so basically these are transaction processing systems there are process control systems and there are enterprise collaboration systems so these are the three main broad categories of uh, operational uh, systems operational support systems and then of course we have the management support systems which are specially there to cater to the needs of the middle and the top level of managers so basically at the operational level the the operations or the processes how the teams will work how the workflow is going to be designed all this is controlled at the operational level by the 
uh, operational support systems or the transaction processing system. So, uh, we will just have a quick look at what are these different types of systems and then we will be talking about each of these in detail. So, basically transaction processing system is, uh, is, a, is an information system which is there for uh, routine operations of the business. So, basically it, it will take cater to the operational database updating mechanism. So, from day to day whatever is happening on a daily basis is recorded in a, in a special database all the daily transactions which are happening they are recorded in the daily database and this is called the transaction processing system. So, in this case uh, you know we have uh, like we have the purchase date purchase processing systems or we have the purchase system, we have the sales management systems. Then uh, in order to know the level of inventory, so there is, a, there is a system called the inventory management or the banking system. So, actually the idea is that all these transactional processing systems, they work in a cross functional area. So, basically different areas of the business enterprise, they are connected to each other using the transactional processing system. So, for example, we have the uh, order, order system and we have the inventory system. So, once the order has been accepted, the inventory system is to be linked to it. So, because the level of inventory is to be checked, then the pricing system mechanism is linked to the inventory system. Like if the level of inventory is low, the price will be made higher. If the inventory is building up, the price for the product may be brought down. So, all this kind of uh, information is provided only through the daily transactional data which is provided by the transaction processing system. So, the transaction processing system is going to look at all these uh, operational or basic functional uh, ways in which the system is going to work. Then we have the other system which is called the process control system. Now, in case of the process control system, it basically supports the operations, but it, it is basically for uh, generally it is used in case of industrial or um, you know in case of uh, manufacturing kind of industries where there is a process in which goods are manufactured according to that specific process. So, here you have uh, you know uh, like we have step by step processes are there where you have the output of one step going into the output in as the input of the other step. So, in that case you need specific mechanisms to control the flow of information as and in when the process is changing or when you want to control the way the process is happening, you need the timely correct information about it. So, for every step you need the right kind of information and that is provided using the process control systems or the special kind of information systems. Right. Then you have the uh, enterprise collaboration systems. Now, in enterprise collaboration, the word collaboration itself means that these information systems are going to cater to the needs of collaborative uh, functioning operations. Right. So, wherever the business requires communication to take place between the different teams or communication to take place between the different operations, in those cases what we have is a collaborative environment. So, here uh, communication between the different uh, members of the team, different uh, stakeholders is made possible and flow of information in this kind of system is multidirectional because information can flow from any person to any other person in the team. So, it, it, it goes in a multidimensional, in a multi arrow manner and information exchange can take place. So, information exchange which is taking place can also include the exchange of workflow, the exchange of various, uh, the sharing of resources, the sharing of files, the sharing of data through the various channels. So, we have already discussed that an information system, it, con, uh, it consists of uh, a telecommunication or a communication network background. So, that background will help in this kind of uh, collaborative system building in which data and information can flow from one to all the other stakeholders of the enterprise. 
right and in then we have the management information system so this kind of information system these are basically the management support system so here it supports the management level of people see the operational uh, information systems they are basically for the lower level of managers or maybe the supervisors who have to control the flow of processes or who have to control the various transactions who have to report the various transactions which are happening so they have to handle large amounts of data but what we are discussing here is uh, the the date the volume of data will become less in this and the level of complexity will become more so as we go higher up in the information system hierarchy the level of information or the level the volume of data decreases but the complexity of the data will increase so here what we see is that there are high volumes of data and these data are processed through simple business models so there there are summary tools there are tools like excel you have tools like access which will provide you charts graphs analytics and some other kinds of pivot charts pivot tables and all these kinds of analyzing and reporting tools for middle level manager so basically these the management information system are designed with an internal orientation internal orientation means that basically these are uh, require these are designed to cater to the needs of the company's people within the company and the data also comes from within the company these are the people who are not required to know about the external uh, factors which are affecting the enterprise so management information system will will be designed with an inward orientation towards the data uh, requirements as well as the data provisions of the company itself so there are several uh, uh, the several kinds of management information systems which are available we are all aware that we can also uh, companies also go for a customized kind of information system of course that is a more complex complex and it is a more comprehensive uh, way to solve the information requirements of the uh, company's managers but then there are several other channels also then we have the next level that is the decision support systems now decision support systems are basically for professionals now again these are for consultants these are for professionals who are going to help or who are going to guide the company's people in making critical decisions so here the volume of data is much lower as compared to the mis data and there are interactive processing models are used in this case so interactive processing model means that scenario building sophisticated tools will be employed to conclude or to come to a decision so something like you know a uh, project cost estimation and analysis now in this case it is a more dynamic kind of structure with ha which has several variables and all these variables can be combined to each other they can be analyzed in a uh, in a more uh, dynamic kind of an a scenario so basically this this builds up a model according to the what if analysis so there are too many conditions too many variables and different variables can ass be assigned different values depending upon the uh, the situations or depending upon the output of the previous steps so accordingly the decision support system will help the manager in coming to a decision now in this case one thing is very important that several times it has been seen that the uh, because these are an automated system so several times they uh, are uh, you know there is a there is a phenomenon which is called as over relying on the automated system over relying on the automated system means that the managers are uh, the the managers or the people who are supposed to take the decision they are re they are referring only to the automated system for the task of decision making but it is very important to note that the human element involvement of the person is important when an automated system is taking a decision because there could be some element of 
subjectivity or there could be some element of randomness which is not taken into account by the automated system. So, it should always be understood that the there should be a judicial balance, there should be a judicial mix between the animate and the inanimate stakeholders of decision making processes. Otherwise, it can be detrimental for the overall health and well being of the institution if there is a phenomenon of over relying on the decision support system. We will be discussing more about this in the decision support system unit. Then we have of course, we have the executive information system. Now, the executive information systems they are basically designed for the top level strategic management group of the company. So, here what they are looking at is only aggregate data processing and they are uh, these actually the executive information system. So, they are obtaining their input from the management information systems and from the decision support system. So, what they are getting is a complete is a complex is a summarized crisp form of data it is they are only looking at the aggregates because they have to take make the strategic choices of the or make the strategic decisions for the company. So, basically in executive information system they integrate both external as well as internal information. We said that the MIS is an internally oriented information system whereas, the executive information system is a uh, outward or is an external oriented system because it has some tactical uh, it, it requires tactical information and it also requires some strategic in inputs and therefore, the, in the result or the output of this system will be a strategic policy decision which the executives can take. So, basically tactical decisions are what are the right uh, ways to do the things and strategic decision means that the, uh, the, the managers are deciding on what are the right things to do for the business. So, basically these are oriented towards the critical success factors of the company. So, critical success factors are those elements in the business environment which will be detrimental in determining the success of the company. For example, it depends from business to business that what are the critical success factors of the company. For example, if it is an online portal, then the critical success factor could be the downtime or the uptime of the server. So, or the availability or the reliability of the technical element, because the entire business is running on a technical background, on a technical backbone. So, basically these systems, they, they of course, they provide the ease of use to the managers, but then at the same time, these are very expensive systems and generally these systems they are designed they are customized systems which are designed keeping in view the specific needs and specific requirements of the executives of the company. So, very less ready made solutions are available in this class of information systems and most of these are customized or tailor made solutions which are provided to the uh, managers. So, now we will talk about the transactional processing systems or the first and the basic category of information system, the simplest of all information systems which work at the bottom most level, which work at the lowest level of information needs. So, here there are few attributes which can uh, which need to be understood when we are talking about a transactional processing system. So, here we mean that it is cross functional. So, we already discussed that the cross it, it actually it crosses between the different functionalities of the business area. So, the same enterprise will be having multiple points where data is being generated. All that data which is being generated due to any kind of interaction of a stakeholder with the system is a transaction. So, all the changes which are being made transaction basically means a change. 
So, any change which is happening in the system or in the company is a transaction. So, transactions could be accounting transactions, there could be financial transactions, there can be inventory management systems and you can also have human resource transactional elements. So, all these are different departments we can say of the same company, but the transactional processing system will have elements from all these because these are all interrelated. So, there are different uh, you know sectors in which the transactional processing systems have proved to be very very successful like we have seen in the banking, in the stock, uh, stock broking, shareholding, financial sectors, purchase and orders like for example, you are purchasing on the phone or you are purchasing on the internet or there is a direct purchase which is happening. So, in that case purchasing is one transaction and if you are ordering through other channels like online or through phone that is another kind of transaction. So, depending on the nature of the business there will be different types of transactions. For example, uh, the transaction of buying some uh, something from a counter of a shop is one type of transaction, but air, airline reservation is another kind of transaction. So, all these transactions will differ from one to the other and the transaction processing system will have to cater to the needs according to the type of transactions which are occurring in the business. So, if we look at the interrelationship between the different types of information systems that we have seen. So, we will see here in this diagram as you can see you have the transactional processing system, you have the management information, the decision support and then you have the enterprise executive information system. Now, there are different attributes which will differ for example, according to the routine nature. So, transactional processing system they will the type of data that they will be handling and the type of output that these will be giving will be a more routine nature. As you move up or as you move outside the, the nature of the transactions and the nature of the information will become more and more non-routine, it will become more and more exceptional information. So, enterprise information systems they will cater to. Uh, very, uh, very rare kind of incidents or very specific kind of incidents, but transaction processing system they will cater to a more routine kind of jobs like the simple uh, on the sale counter or ordering kind of information or uh, in case if it is a banking then all account withdrawals are routine information, right. Then if you talk about, if we talk about the decision support which is required or which it gives. So, transactional processing systems they give the least support for decision making whereas, the enterprise uh, systems or the ex, uh, expert systems or what we call as the executive systems they provide the maximum support for decision making. So, as you move up to this the, uh, the decision support capability of the system will increase more and more. Then input output or exchange of data. Now, maximum exchange of data takes place at the transactional level because all input output takes place and all the data entry takes place at the transactional level and all the reports which are also given the maximum number of reports which are generated are generated by the transactional processing system. So, as you move up the input output processes will become less and less and the within the transactional processing system the input output processes are very uh, are maximum they are they are the most number of transactions and if we talk about complex analysis of course the enterprise subsystems or the executive systems they provide the most complex analysis of data and information whereas the transaction processing systems they they are the simplest systems which will which are not required to provide any kind of complicated analysis of aggregate data. They only talk about discrete routine kind of operational data. So, complex analysis will increase as you move out of the circles. So, transactional processing system appears to be a very simple system 
and uh, therefore sometimes it may come to one's mind that what is the significance of a transactional processing system if it is so naive and it is so simple. But the point here is that transactional processing system is the first step or it is the first window at which data is entered into the system for decision making purposes. So, all the data which is entering or which is coming into the system is coming through the transaction processing system. Only then all the other systems will build their database uh, on the data which is provided by the transaction processing system. So, basically transaction processing systems they are very uh, very important for building efficiency in the organization. So, one very important aspect of transactional processing system is that it has digitalized the environment of the companies. Digitalization means that all the transactions have now become paperless or they are going to become paperless. So, paperless transactions, paperless records are very important. Uh, a uh, very important result of having computerized transaction processing systems. Then while data entry is being done, there while in case of manual systems, there are a lot of errors which can creep into the system while data entry is being handled. But in this case, all the manual errors, they are eliminated, they are minimized because the system itself has several validation and validity, concurrency and uh, cohesiveness checks on the data. So, therefore, the, the chances of having data which has errors in the system is very less because the data has been validated and has been verified. Of course, since it is a technical uh, uh, option, it is a the amount of speed that it is going to provide to the entire process of decision making will be manifold because the speed at which data is handled by a transaction processing system is unmatched to that which is done by a manual system. Then of course, we have the same transaction is occurring multiple number of times that is known as redundant transaction. So, in this case if the same transaction is coming multiple times then the the person sitting at the system or the person on the desk is not required to enter that transaction for multiple number of time. At least a lot of effort is saved while the same type of transaction has been entered. There are several mechanisms which have been uh, developed in the transaction processing systems for eliminating this kind of redundancy in case of data processing system. And further if we talk about online transaction processing system. Now, online transaction processing these are actually real time transaction processing system. So, they are very important and they are much more efficient than the, uh, con than the uh, traditional transaction processing systems because they provide real time feedback. Real time feedback means that whatever is happening the the out the the feedback is given at the same time and real time reports and database updates are happening so for example an order has been placed right an order has been placed but the the goods are very less the goods remaining in the inventory are very less so when it is a real time system it will at the same moment immediately it will tell the system that the level of inventory is falling and therefore, no further orders should be taken. So, this kind of a system is a real time feedback system which is provided by the online transaction processing system and then we have real time reporting and database updates also take place at the same time. So, basically the time lag between the occurring of a transaction and the reporting of the transaction is minimize or is brought to 0 in case of online transaction processing systems. So, basically transaction processing systems they are categorized into two main broad categories. One is the batch processing and the other is the real time or online processing. Now, in case of batch processing systems the transaction data are accumulated over a period of time. So, they are collected for over a period of time and then the data is processed. Now, this period of time could could vary, it could be a daily, a daily uh, collection of data and processing it at the end of the day or at the end of the week, at the end of the fortnight or at the end of the 
month. So, there could be several ways or several different periods according to which the data is gathered and then it is processed. The most common example of batch processing systems are the payroll systems. Now, in payroll system what is happened is that the data is gathered for a period of 30 or 31 days and then this data is processed. Similarly, the billing also. Billing generally is done at the end of a billing period. The billing period could be 1 month or 2 months. So, these are examples of batch processing systems. Now, they are very, these were actually uh, required or these were actually you know brought in because of synchronization issues were there. Synchronization issues are one important problem with the real time systems. So, real time systems of course, they are those systems which are also called as online transaction processing system or we say OLTP system. So, online transaction processing system they get in immediately the transaction is processed. So, there is no delay in the occurring of the transaction and the processing of the transaction data. So, for example, in case of a batch processing system, if an employee is taking a day's leave, so that leave is occurring on a specific day, but the reflection of that leave in the system is taking place at the end of the month. But in this case, as soon as a transaction occurs, its effect is showing. So, this is called real time. But in this case, there are synchronization issues which are brought in. Synchronization issues means that if there is only one product, if there is only one item and two persons or two parties want to have control of that one item or they want to buy that one item through an online processing system. So, in that case, there is a requirement for a specific kind of synchronization to be done as in which request to be accessed. So, the same thing happens in case of reservations also railway reservations or train reservations or airline reservations where again the same kind of synchronization issues are dealt with. Then of course, rental services are one more example where real time data processing is happening and this is uh, this is a big success story of how online transaction processing has been done. Then of course, uh, we have in this case we have um, uh, several other uh, this things like we have uh, another kind of uh, transaction processing system where we have the online delayed processing. In that case what happens is that the transaction processing occurs at the same time. But the, the I mean the transaction data is stored at the same time, but the processing will occur at some other time. So, in this case the there is no uh, there is no need of you know a delay is not happening, but the processing will happen at, after some time. So, that kind of a system is called as an online delayed transaction processing system. So, this kind of an online delayed transaction processing is found out in deposit. So, when we go for bank deposits or when we go for catalog, catalog ordering kind of a system. So, in that case the transaction is entered and the occurrence or the processing or the effect of the transaction is seen at a delayed or after a time lag. So, this kind of a system is a third algorithm for transaction processing using uh, an in between approach of real time as well as transaction processing in a batch mode. Right. So, now in case of a transaction processing system, there is a, a flow of trans data which takes place. Now, transaction processing cycle basically is the way the system is going to deal with the data that is coming into it and how data is converted into information which can be given to the next step. Maybe it can be given to the management information systems or it can be given to the managers which who are requiring the transactional information, maybe the supervisors or maybe the floor managers or maybe the process controller, all these people. So, if we look at the transaction processing cycle, so we have some original data, that data is being collected. Now, this data collection uh, is another step. So, the data can be collected using multiple uh, steps or multiple techniques like the, there can be barcode reading or you know there can be data entry which is done or there can be scanning of the original documents or the receipts or the vouchers through which the 
data is entered or manually the data is entered into say uh, a spreadsheet or a database application. Then this data is edited and it is checked for correctness. So, if the data is correct, it is free of errors, then it is moved on to the next step of manipulation. But in case errors are detected, the data is not validated and verified, then the data is again corrected and it is again fed into the data collection system. So, if we have the correct data, that is the data does not require any kind of correction, then the data manipulation takes place. After the data manipulation has been done, the any kind of uh, calculations, manipulations here mean the calculations which are required for the data, the summarizing of the data, any kind of deductions or inferences which are to be drawn from the data is done, any kind of linkages is done, then the data is stored into the database. So, the data storage steps comes in and then finally, we have the document production or the report which is generated out of the transaction processing cycle. So, basically in this case we have the document preparation or the report. So, we, we calculate, we see, we look at the purchase order, how the documents are collected. So, we have the paychecks or we have the receipts, we have the invoices. So, basically transactional reports are actually operational reports. They, are, they, they do not have any analysis in them. Analysis is only done after the MIS or maybe in the decision support system. In these the reports of the transactional processing system are basically more of operational of more of day to day kind of reports. That is how much production was taking place, what are the total orders for a specific items or what is the amount due to a particular person or how many uh, transactions took place in a specific account in the bank. So, it is only going to provide that kind of a day to day kind of data. Right. So, even if, and then it comes to trans synchronization issues in case of transaction processing. So, for example, there are ties which are happening. Right. So, ties is something when two uh, processes or two stakeholders are wanting to access the same resource. So, which process or which uh, resource is to be given that kind of uh, and the access right. So, that is kind of a tie. Then there can be dependencies in the processes. For example, you cannot process an order or you cannot process the, uh, the billing before the order has been delivered. So, first the delivery has to be done only then the order can be or the financial uh, uh, transaction of the delivery can be process. So, this kind of interdependencies between the transactions are also seen where one transaction cannot be processed unless the other transaction has been completed. The next transaction or sometimes the previous transaction has not been completed. So, the following transaction cannot be undertaken. So, all this kind of transaction processing will require to, uh, to cater to the synchronization issues, to cater to the dependencies, to cater to the uh, any kind of deadlock or any kind of uh, concurrency issues which may occur among the different processes in the process cycle. Now, database man maintenance and database management is also very important because the databases in case of transaction processing system, it will ensure that the databases are up to date, they are correct. Now, there can be multiple databases also because we are talking about a cross functional uh, perspective of the transactional processing system. So, if it is a large organization, it may have more than one database for storing transactions of different departments. So, there can be one sales database, there can be a financial database, there can be human resource database. So, different databases are there depending on the the, the nature and the structure of the organization. So, if uh, the if if you have a single purchase for example and you are having multiple databases. So, if you have an inventory database, so then this single purchase by uh, will have to be reflected in the inventory database. So, it will show that the quantity is to be decreased. If you have if the purchase was done using a credit card, then the credit limit is to be decrease because the credit has been done and increase the sales by one unit. So, for a single transaction you will see that there are three databases which are going to be changed, which are going to be affected. So, basically the it is the transaction processing system which will 
count on all the transactions and which will keep updating all the multiple purchases or all the multiple transactions in the different databases of different departments of the company. So, it is a very important aspect of the uh, transaction processing system. Then if we, if we look at the inquiry processing, so when was a purchase made? So, there, there can be several queries you know which, which have taken place or which will take place by from the users or from the managers uh, regarding the transactions which are happening. They would want to know several things. For example, they would want to know when was the purchase made okay, or what does a customer have any credit into the account or was the item scheduled for delivery. So, there are several queries which will come into it. So, MIS will also we have we will see that MIS systems they also allow for inquiries to take place, but the information available there is summarized or it is aggregated. That is what are the total sales for a whole department, what is the best selling product. But here the inquiries in case of a transaction processing system, these are very pinpointed inquiries for specific transactions. So, if a particular customer wants to know about his particular sales transaction, that kind of information will not be available in the MIS uh, system. That will be available only through the reports of the transaction processing system. So, this, this kind of inquiry processing is very important. Uh, because the day-to-day -day inquiries or the day-to-day -day queries into the databases can be catered only through the transaction processing system interface, not through the MIS interface because that is only going to talk about the aggregate or consolidated data figures, not about the individual data items. So, if we look here, so we can see that the data processing cycle, it has four basic steps that is what we have summarized here now that is first step is data entry that is how the data is prepared, how the data is checked for the errors, how the data is collected and it is made available to the processing. So, basically document collection, document preparation and data entry into the system is the main first step of the data processing cycle. Then we have the processing step in which you can have the online processing of the transactions as we have already discussed or we can have the batch transaction processing system or we can have a delayed batch uh, processing system. Then of course, we have the document and report generation step. So, in document and report generation step, basically the reports are generated according to the need. So, if we have seen that there are multiple databases, so multiple reports from each of the database can be taken out depending on the queries which are generated. So, therefore, inquiry processing is one of the other main functions which a data processing cycle has to uh, comprehend to or it has to cater to. Inquiry processing may it basically the document reports are studied and the data from the database is filtered and the results are given to the uh, inquiry or they are the results are given to the manager who is trying to find out specific pieces of information, specific pieces of discrete data which is present in the database. So, basically if you see here, we have seen that this is a simple customer transaction processing system, a customer order transaction processing system. So, if you see a customer places an order, right. So, the first step here is that the order enters and there is a sales configuration file which is done. So, the order entry is done once the customer has placed the order. Then we have the shipment planning. So, shipment planning is there, then you have the routing and scheduling. Once you have to decide which items, how the, uh, the delivery is to be scheduled and which is the best route which is to be taken. Then there is another important uh, component of the system which is called the inventory control. Whenever the order is processed definitely there will be the inventory which will change or in case of accepting the order before the order is accepted also there is a need for looking at the levels of the inventory. Then we have the execution of the 
shipment. Once the shipment is been executed, then the invoice is to be generated. So, we have seen that these are the different parts. So, these are the different departments, these are the different components of the transaction processing system or where the transactions are going to occur. So, the order entry will lead to the actual order. Then after the actual order is done, then the shipment planning department will take up the list of the inventory. It will plan the shipments. Then again the inventory status is also to be updated to the order entry because the next order will depend upon the level of the inventory which is present at the present. Then the route scheduled routes are decided and they are communicated to the shipment execution. And then also the inventory control is the products then are to be delivered to the customer and finally, the shipped orders they are generated and the invoices for the shipped orders are generated and these invoices are then again sent back to the customer. So, basically this is a comprehensive system of how the, in, uh, the order processing in case of a transaction processing system is done and a single order which is placed into the system will lead to so many other interrelated or so many departments which are affected by that single order and each of these has their own database or they can have a con, uh, centralized database which will store the transactional data about each of these steps right from the point of the order till the point the invoice is sent to the customer. All these uh, data items are to be meticulously stored by the transaction processing system. So, transaction processing system it offers a multitude of advantages. First is that this is interrelatedness. The different components of the com of the or enterprise they work in an interrelated manner. We have just seen how a single transaction of placing an order of a single product by a customer is affecting so many departments. So, they are all interrelated to each other and transaction processing system is the only way in which this interrelated architecture of the departments can be maintained. Then we have enhanced feedback. Enhanced feedback means that as soon as the transaction is occurring, as soon as the product is going out from the inventory, at the same time the feedback is being sent to the ordering department that no more orders will be taken or more so if the inventory level is building up. In that case, they will give a, a pricing lower kind of a feedback to the ordering department or to the sales department so that the inventory which is building up fast will be lowered if the price is brought down or if the number of items in the inventory has fallen below the mark then they will give a alert to the sales department that the prices of the items can be increased. So, this kind of a dynamic feedback which is provided by the transaction processing system to among the various departments is very important for a quick and correct decision making. Then the number of transactions are also reduced because the same transaction is occurring and the the repercussion of the same transaction can be uh, can be passed on to all the departments. So, therefore, individual transactions may be clubbed into uh, a more complex transaction and therefore, the effective number of transactions which are taking place in the files will be reduced. Therefore, this will lead to a faster feedback and the faster feedback will help in quick decision making by the managers of the company. So, this quick decision making is going to affect the other steps in the decision making process that is it will provide faster information to the management information system which will help the middle level managers to depend upon the data which is provided by the transactional data or transactional processing system data. So, if we look at the interrelationship between an MIS uh, and a DSS and a transaction processing system and a process control system. So, what we see here is that there is a, if you if you are talking about a manufacturing unit. So, the process control system it looks at the assembly line. So, basically it is the production data which is go, which is being given by the process control system to the 
MIS or to the decision support system. If you are talking about the customer's data, so we have a customer order database, customer database and an inventory database. So, basically the transaction processing system is going to cater to and is going to prepare all these databases, product data, price data, inventory, order and customer and all these databases they are again giving information to the MIS about what is the inventory, what are the orders and how the pricing is to be done. And finally, the manager will decide on the product or the price with the help of the MIS. So, basically you, the manager will have the uh, flexibility, he will have the ability to take a call on the product or the price change which is to be done keeping in view the data which is provided to the manager by the transactional processing system or by the transactional processing system. So, basically uh, in uh, today's lecture what we discussed is how a transactional processing system will help the managers and will help the other the management uh, the management information system and the decision support system to take the decision making abilities of the managers to a higher level. So, we will be continuing with this in the next lectures till then thank you.